Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to welcome the men and women of the armed forces into the Albert Hall. The drum altar has been laid, and the service of remembrance will begin after the muster, which gets underway with the Royal Navy. Seventy-four representatives of the Royal Navy from all trades within the service, led into the hall by Lieutenant Commander Simon Hendon and Warrant Officer First Class Paul Rayton. Now they're representing Royal Navy ships, submarines and naval air squadrons and shore establishments around the UK, 28 of them in all. And among all of them, we have representatives of HMS Prince of Wales, a rather special vessel, a Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier declared operational a year ago. There we have Queen Alexandra's Royal Naval Nursing Service, the nursing branch of the Royal Navy. They're the ones providing vital care in theatres around the world. familiar sight of the Royal Marines Commandos. Ten representatives led by Captain Dean Kubrick. These are the elite fighting force optimised for rapid response worldwide. And we're looking at three sections of the Maritime Reserves. We have the Royal Naval Reserve, which is 3,000 strong, part-time force of civilians. And then we have the Royal Marines Reserve, and the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, which delivers logistical and operational support around the world. The Army. Smart and immaculate, leading the way, F Company Scots Guards, led by Lieutenant Roland Walker, the public duties incremental company of the regiment. The three buttons telling us that it's the Scots Guards. And here we have five buttons. That tells us it's the Welsh Guards, equally smart, equally immaculate. The regiment raised in 1915, the regiment which suffered losses in the Falklands, of course. Household Cavalry, led by Lieutenant Angus McCall and Corporal of War's Casey Garfaker. The 3rd Battalion, the Parachute Regiment, making their way in their familiar berets. Two Queen's Own Gurkha Orderly Officers, leading in the Brigade of Gurkhas, the Royal Gurkha Rifles. One six five Port and Maritime Regiment, the Royal Logistics Corps. They'll be followed by Queen Alexandra's Royal Army Nursing Corps, led by Major Andrew John Robinson, providing vital services abroad and, of course, here in the UK. Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, 5th Battalion. Also joining us, 256 City of London Field Hospital. The Royal Air Force. The servicemen and women of the Royal Air Force led into the Albert Hall by Flight Lieutenant Emma Bonnet and uh, Flight Lieutenant uh, Arunjan Lugastan. The stations represented, including Bryce Norton and High Wickham and Northolt, which was the airfield which received the Queen's Coffin when it was flown back from Scotland.
King's Colour Squadron, 28 members, the dedicated ceremonial unit of the Royal Air Force. And on the Queen's passing in September, the squadron became the custodians of the King's Colour and renamed on the 27th of October. Princess Mary's Air Force Nursing Service joining us, the Royal Air Force Police as well, and then the Royal Air Force Reserves. The Royal Auxiliary Air Force, the Air Force Cadets, and the University Air Squadrons. The Merchant Navy. Ten representatives serving seafarers and cadets, including Chief Officer Philip Cave. Cadets uh, all from Warsash Maritime Academy in Southampton. the Royal British Legion and civilian services. <laughs> Representing 350,000 poppy sellers across the UK, who've distributed more than 45 million poppies this year. It's a wonderful effort. We also have the civilian services, including the National NHS Ambulance Service, the Coast Guard, Police and Fire Service, and the St John Ambulance and St Andrews First Aid.